Hey guys, I just wanted to share today some tricks and tips I've discovered while using on edit and on change triggers in Google Apps Script to be able to use for an edit log and change log. But these tips and tricks will also probably help you with other projects that you use those triggers as well. So I just want to run through basically what one of the biggest issues that I've consistently run into and that I've seen that many people run into when looking at this kind of logging is the fact that the old value is very finicky. So for example, if I type in Tom here and just to explain the central screen is my on edit log, the far right is my on change log. So I entered Tom on original tab here. So you can see here, I've been able to capture this data. So this is just using a new date function. I'm capturing the source tab name, source range name, and then using the column, I was able to determine the column header. And then based on some logic, determined that this was adding a value. Old value is blank as would be expected, because it was blank. And the new value is Tom, and I also got the user object. And then on the on change, you can see I got the same date time. I got the sheet, but um, I will tell you this is not fully reliable um, since I'm just using get active sheet. Um, since the on change does not have a source inside the event object. Um, and then the on change change type. And then on change also has a user. All right. So now I kind of explained what's going on here, uh, what we have. Let me just show you what happens. So if we delete Tom here, we have a new row here with no old value and no new value. Except for the issue was, is we know that Tom was there. So let's try some more and see what we get. So pending. So as we expect, old blank, new has pending. We delete this. So this doesn't matter if you hit backspace or delete you have the same result. So I, through much Googling, as they say, I discovered one way to get around this. And I discovered that if you have a background or borders, it'll actually capture the old value. And so I'm going to demo that right now. So new sheet, you can tell it has a background. I also added a border just for the sake of it. <clears throat> so let's just try the same thing, Tom. And so you can tell now we're coming from the new sheet, adding Tom. Let's go ahead and delete it. And lo and behold, there is Tom in the old value. So I don't know why this works this way, but I can tell you there it is. It does not lie, Tom, right there, old value. Now. Let me explain, go through real quick and show you because there's two things with old, with on edit and the values is when you're dealing with a single cell, this old value, this is how it works. So once you have a background or a border, um, then you can capture reliably old value and new value if a single cell is edited. Now, let me just show you. because this is another thing that happens. Let's say copy paste. So what we have here is we now have a range and I determined that this is add or change. And the reason why uh, it's undetermined is because old value is simply not available if you're doing a range. If there's no way around it, it's not available. Now, the new value here is actually a little bit of a hack, and I'll show you why in a second. This new value actually isn't in the event object either. However, what I did was I used the range that included and went and found those values from the spreadsheet after. So it didn't come from the event object, it came in the script afterwards. <clears throat> so final thing I'll show you real quick here, and then we'll jump into the script, I'll show you there. And then I will also drop a link to this spreadsheet um, project in the comments. 
so you guys can make a copy of this and play with this for yourself. So <clears throat> let me just go ahead and delete Tom and John here. And when it jumps in here, we're gonna see the same thing. Delete now though. Um, old value still not available. And obviously new value is not available. <clears throat> so finish deleting this. And just as we expect. All right, let me go ahead and jump into this. And so I have some extra stuff here. <clears throat> but first I have on edit. And then down at the bottom, I have the on change. So the on change is much shorter. There's very little available in the event object. You basically have the user, you have change type, and that's pretty much it. You can get the trigger um, ID, and that's basically it as far as what you get. Um, so I'm just logging that, basically making a date right here getting the nickname for the user. You can also get the email. Now, one thing to note is you can only get the user if they authorized the script. <clears throat> if they do not authorize the script, you're not gonna get that. Um, so this could be if they install the trigger for themselves or if they authorize the script. So if you trigger um, somehow for them to authorize the script, which I have a authorized little Thing here that you can use. Um, this is using the property service and user properties, and it determines if they've authorized the script. If not, then it prompts them to authorize the script with a little uh, script authorization right there. All right, so let's just run through this on edit real quick. Um, so source sheet, and on edit, we do have a source in the event object, and so we can get the source sheet reliably right there. And then we can get the range here, also from the event source. Now what I did here was in this range that has row start row end, column start column end. And so you can actually get the source range and then get the values. So <clears throat> What's interesting is this does not work if you just do range.getValues, but it does work if you parse out what I'm doing here, basically determining how many columns or how many rows there are and how many columns are, um, and then getting that range. Um, and then here's the user object. Um, so you have nickname and email. And so I'm just parsing, grabbing this. Um, if it's blank, it means it's not existing and the user did not authorize the script. So I'll just come in as unauthorized and I'm actually gonna show you, let's just show you that real quick. Uh, I have the same sheet pulled up under a different user. And so if I enter Tom here, we're gonna have it pop in here with unauthorized user. All right. So then I get some different parsing here, different logic. Um, this is where I get the column header that which gives a little more relevance to the value that you're seeing there. Getting the range reference. And then here's just a little logic. I don't know if you've, you guys have used this before, but just as far as using an on edit, you can determine um, the column and the value and do conditions based on that. So if you've never seen that, there you go. All right, and then basically here, I'm determining if it is a range. So if there's more than one row or more than one column, then it is a range. And so then I'm gonna join the values from the data I collected there and then change that range type to yes. <coughs> and then here I'm doing some logic trying to determine what kind of change it was. Um, delete, add, add or change, delete or change here. And then finally, um, determine the data I'm going to log. And so I leave it blank um, when there's not a new value just so it doesn't throw all different things in there. And then just log it. And then let me just show you real quick here on this on change. the way I'm grabbing that sheet name is just getting the active sheet and getting the sheet name. And so 
Um, I've had a couple experiences where this didn't work quite right, and it potentially is if a user has multiple tabs for the same spreadsheet open. Um, but if you guys find anything more on that, let me know in the comments. Thanks guys for watching, and we'll be back soon. I'm probably gonna have another tutorial here soon on on edit on Ainge Trigger. Um, maybe going through some more of the basics, maybe going through some stuff um, like moving rows and things like that. All right, so thanks guys, have a great day.